Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? At this time, please place all electronic devices to vibrate. All electronic devices to vibrate. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of July 29th, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Thank you. We will now do roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Less than present. Borelli. Brannon. Brooks Powers. Present. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cornegie. Dharma Diaz. Present. Ruben Diaz. Present. Dinowitz. Present. Drum. Present. Eugene. Present. Felice. Present. Gennaro. Gibson. Jonai. Grudenchik. Holden. Kalos. Ku. Kozowitz. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Lewis. Mizell. Menchaka. Miller, Present. Moya, Present. Perkins, Present. Powers, yeah. Reynoso, <coughs> Menchaca, Present. Riley, Present. Rivera. Rodriguez. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Present. Salamanca. Traeger. Here. Gibson. Present. Ulrich. Valone. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Cumbo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum, and thank you so much. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Pastor Ben Hur senior pastor and spiritual leader at Promise Church and Ministries International, located at 130-30 31st Avenue in Flushing, Queens. Welcome. Let us pray. Father God, the creator and the ruler of all the universe, we thank you that your name is a strong tower where the righteous can run to you and are safe. Thank you for giving New York City and the United States resilience in the face of all the despair of the past year and a half with the unprecedented global corona pandemic catastrophe. Father, within this unfinished battle with the pandemic, above all, we pray for our courageous 
first responders in the medical field who are working around the clock for the health and safety of our communities in hospitals, clinics, and emergency rooms. Oh Lord, we lift to you our concern for people who have already been affected by this pandemic. Please take away the fear, anxiety, and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment in this time of uncertainty. We pray for those who have been impacted financially from this interruption. Regardless of race, color, religion, as we realize that our current difficulties are an open tunnel, not a closed cave, grant us the patience to endure a little more. Finally, we pray for New York City Council members in this room. New York City is the capital of the world, so what is discussed and decided here will have a global impact. Therefore, please grant the speaker, Corey Johnson, and the city council members insight to accurately analyze reality, foresight to precisely predict the future, and the wisdom and courage to seamlessly connect the two. So through each agenda and resolution to be handled in this chamber, may all New Yorkers experience a safer and better quality of life. And then New York City, which used to be the epicenter of the pandemic, would be the hypercenter that provides dreams and inspiration to people all around the world again. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a very, very, very powerful prayer, Pastor Her, And we welcome you as well as the other members of your congregation and the youthful members that are here, that are in our balcony. We thank you so much for being here. And it is an honor at this time to have Council Member Peter Koo to spread the invocation onto the record. Council Member Koo. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Reverend Her. Reverend Ben Her serves as the senior pastor at Palmish Church located in Flushing, Queens. Over his 25 years of service at Palmish Ministries, Reverend Her has taken a local immigrant church to the global stage. A testament to his leadership, commitment, and the servant-minded attitude. He wants local programs for youth and our elderly and during the pandemic, his ministry provided food, personal care packages, and medical supplies to our most vulnerable. Globally, he has used soccer to connect millions of people across 30 cities through his Soccer with Values initiative. Reverend Her has even brought his faith to the Apollo Theater, where he wrote a musical called His Life receive positive reviews from the New York Times. And for the movie buffs, wondering why the reference name might sound familiar. He does, in fact, share his name with the Oscar-winning movie, Ben-Hur. <laughs> in fact, he was born the same year he was produced. Guess what year? 1959. Ah. Thank you. Madam uh, Public, uh, no, Madam Majority Leader, I would like to thank Pastor Her for being here today and make a motion for unanimous consent to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Peter Ku. If you could just remain at the microphone because we have another task for you. 
But I also want to thank you again, Pastor Her, for that powerful prayer, very timely, and it's an honor to have you in the council chambers today. At this time, we will now have the adoption of minutes, also by council member Peter Ku. I make a motion for unanimous consent to adopt the minutes of stated meeting of June 17, 2021 in full upon the record. Thank you. We'll pause for one moment. So let me repeat that again. I make a motion for unanimous support, un unanimous consent to adopt the minutes of state meeting uh, as printed right, uh, of June 17, 2021 in full upon the record. Thank you so much, Council Member Ku. We'll now go into messages and papers from the mayor. Pre-considered M322, Corporation Council Appointment. Rules, privileges, and elections. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. Welcome to our July stated meeting. While I hope everyone is enjoying their summer, it is important to acknowledge that COVID cases have been surging in New York City primarily due to the Delta variant. We need more and more New Yorkers to get vaccinated. We have already lost too many New Yorkers to this deadly virus. As of yesterday, 33,519 New Yorkers have died from the coronavirus. Unfortunately, we recently had a COVID death in the council family. Dulcia Phillips, the grandmother of council member Vanessa Gibson, died of COVID in Trinidad, where she was living in a nursing home. We are sending our prayers to Vanessa and her entire family during this time. We also lost Matthew Pecorino, who was council member Eric Ulrich's budget director. He passed away unexpectedly on June 30th. He was 40 years old. I wanna send my deepest condolences to his family, to his friends, to council member Ulrich and his entire office and those of us who personally knew him here at the council. And as I do at every state, I wanna remember the lives lost to 9-11 related illnesses. On July 19th, we lost retired firefighter Wayne Gehring. We also acknowledge those who died while on the job in New York City. On July 22nd, Federico Zaput Palax, a food delivery worker, died in a traffic crash in Brooklyn. He was 27 years old. On July 8th, Borkat Ola, another delivery worker, was killed when he was struck by a hit-and-run driver while riding his e-bike in Manhattan. He was 24 years old. On, July 14, on June 14th, Bronx grocery store worker Jose Carreño died from injuries he suffered when he was beaten by a customer. He was 50 years old. On June 13th, four-hire vehicle driver Mohammed Hussein died while he, when he was struck by an unlicensed driver in Queens. He was 47. These tragic deaths remind us of the important work that delivery workers, drivers, and grocery store workers do every day to keep our city thriving, and our collective prayers are with their loved ones and family during this time. On July 25th, Harlem-born Bob Moses, one of our nation's most relentless civil rights activists, died. He was 86 years old. Moses endured violence to register black voters in Mississippi in the 1960s and help organize poor and rural black residents. He is an example for all of us of the importance of fighting injustices no matter what the obstacles are. And lastly, I would want to acknowledge the anniversary of a tragic loss that happened here. Councilmember James Davis, who was killed in City Hall on July 23rd, 2003. His senseless death is a stark reminder that gun violence can occur anywhere, even in City Hall. So let us pause for a moment of silence for Wayne Gehring, Matthew Pecorino, Dulce Phillips, Federico Zupat, Borcott, 
Allah, Jose Carreño, Mohammed Hussein, Bob Moses, and James Davis. Thank you. Now on to our agenda for the day. Out of the Finance Committee, today we'll be voting on first, a transparency resolution, second, introduction number 2291, sponsored by our Finance Committee Chair, Danny Drum, which will authorize changes to the Flatiron 23rd Street partnership bid in my council district. Third, a property tax exemption for Beck Street HDFC and Councilmember Salamanca's district to preserve 83 units of affordable housing. And fourth, a property tax exemption for Maimonides in Councilmember Menchaca's district to preserve 221 units of affordable housing. I'm also pleased that today we'll be confirming Georgia Pistana to be the Corporation Counsel for the City of New York. She'll be the first woman to serve as the City's Corporation Counsel, and this is the first time the Council has confirmed the head lawyer for the City. We are proud to approve her nomination. Ms. Pistana is a 35-year veteran of the Law Department who has now twice served as Acting Corporation Counsel. Her qualifications for the position are indisputable. We asked her a lot of tough and important questions in her confirmation hearing. In the 30 plus years since the council has been a co-equal branch of government with the mayor, we have generally worked well with the amazing lawyers at the law department, but there have been some long-standing concerns about the law department's independence from whoever the mayor is. And that is why we pushed for the council to have advice and consent when it comes to the corporation council and the 2019 Charter Revision Commission, and that was overwhelmingly approved by voters. Ms. Pistana made clear to us that she understood our concerns and committed to always putting the needs of the city and city government as a whole before those of any mayor. We look forward to working with the new Corporation Council and having an even better working relationship with the Law Department under her tenure. Moving on, the, moving on from the Committee on Human Rights, we're voting on introduction number uh, 339B, which is sponsored by Councilmember Debbie Rose, and it will extend employment protections of the human rights law to all domestic, wor domestic workers, regardless of staff size. Debbie, you've worked on this a very, very long time. Congratulations. Uh, very proud of you. Domestic workers include those employed at an employer's residence for the purpose of caring for a child, sick or elderly person, or for housekeeping or other domestic services. The protections in this bill include prohibitions against discrimination in employment, such as hiring, firing, and promoting based on a protected category, such as gender, race, and unlawful discrimination against victims of domestic violence, sex offenses, or stalking. Domestic workers would also be entitled to reasonable accommodations for pregnancy, childbirth, and related conditions, such as lactation accommodations upon request. And from the staff, I want to thank Jayasri Ganapathy and Wyam Diori. Today we're voting on my bill, introduction number 2252A from the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. This bill will require city human service contractors and certain subcontractors to enter into labor peace agreements with labor organizations seeking to represent their employees rendering services under the city's human service contracts. During such agreements, employers agree to maintain a neutral posture at union efforts to organize employees, meaning they agree not to hinder or disrupt the organizing process, while the union in turn agrees not to go on strike or otherwise stop work. While labor peace agreements can be helpful to worker organizing, they likewise benefit employers and recipients of city services by ensuring service delivery will continue uninterrupted no later than 90 days after the award or renewal of a human services contract the contractor would be obligated to submit evidence that, number one, the employer has entered into one or more labor peace agreements with a labor organization, or no labor organization has sought to represent their employees. Such evidence would be updated annually. And I'm from the staff, I want to thank Nusat Chowdhury and Thomas Nath. We're also voting here today on a five-bill package that will help small mom-and-pop restaurants and regulate third-party food delivery services uh, in our city. This package extends some of the measures that the council 
already put in place to help restaurants during the pandemic, at the beginning of the pandemic, and new provisions will help create an equitable playing field between these platforms and the restaurants that use them. DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, and similar apps are the middle people between restaurants and their customers. Customers rely heavily on these already popular platforms for food delivery, uh, especially that's been the case during the pandemic. As a city opens up and restaurants attempt to return to normal, New Yorkers continue to rely on these third-party delivery apps at a high frequency. Unfortunately, when food orders are placed through these platforms, it greatly reduces or eliminates restaurants' ability to fully profit on delivery orders. Introduction number 2333A from our Committee uh, on Small Business is sponsored by Chair Joni, and it will prohibit third-party delivery platforms from listing restaurants on their application or website and making deliveries from those restaurants without a written agreement to do so. Additionally, the legislation prohibits the delivery platforms from acquiring the restaurants in these written agreements to indemnify the platform or their independent contractors or agents for damage that occurs after food or beverages leave the restaurant. The Commissioner of the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection will be required to conduct outreach about the requirements of this bill to restaurants. Violations of this bill would result in a civil penalty to a delivery platform of up to $500 per day per restaurant. And from the staff, I wanna thank Stephanie Jones and Noah Mexler. Also from the Committee on Small Business, we're voting on introduction number 2335A, again, sponsored by Chair Joni. This bill will require the platforms to list a restaurant's actual telephone number. If listing any telephone number for a restaurant, if the platform also includes an alternative number, typically one created by the platform itself, they must provide a description of the telephone numbers that identifies each type of telephone number and any fees associated with their use. The commissioner, again, of DCWP would be required to promulgate rules defining the content, size, and location of the description. Violations of this bill, again, would result in a civil penalty of $500 uh, to the delivery platform per day per restaurant. And again, I want to thank Stephanie and Noah for their work. From the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, we're voting on introduction number 2311A, sponsored by Councilmember Keith Powers. This bill will require third-party delivery platforms to share information with restaurants related to the food and beverage orders those restaurants prepare. Restaurants that request it would receive the name of the customer who placed an order with their establishment along with the customer's phone number, email address, delivery address, and the contents of their order. Customers will be able to opt out of sharing this information with restaurants, and the third-party platform will be required to provide a clear disclosure to customers explaining what information would be shared with the restaurant. The restaurant fulfilling the customer's order would be permitted to retain that information, which must be provided by the platform in machine-readable format. Platforms could not set their own limits on restaurants' use of the information, but the bill would prohibit the restaurants from selling, renting, or disclosing the information without express consent from the customer, and the customer would be able to withdraw their consent to using their information. Violations, again, of this would create a civil penalty to the delivery platform of the $500 per day per restaurant. And again, I want to thank Stephanie and Noah, as well as uh, Leah Skirpiak for their work on this bill. The last two bills are from the Committee on Small Business again and extend measures that have been in place for more than a year and were set to expire next month. We're voting on introduction number 2356A, sponsored by, again, Committee Chair Mark Joni, which extends local laws 51 and 87 of 2020. This legislation prohibits third-party delivery platforms from charging restaurants for telephone orders that did not result in a transaction. This bill also would extend protections until February 17, 2022. Violations of this bill would result in a civil penalty to the delivery platform of not more than $500 per day per restaurant. And again, Stephanie and Noah worked on this. And finally, introduction number 2359A, sponsored by Council Members Francisco Moya, and again, Chair Joni, prohibit delivery platforms from charging restaurants more than 15% per, per order for delivery and more than 5% per order for all other fees. It would also clarify the types of transaction fees exempted from these limits on changes, on charges. 
This bill would extend protections until, until again, February 17, 2022. Violations of this bill would result in a civil penalty of not more than $1,000 to the delivery platform per day per restaurant. And again, I want to thank Stephanie and Noah for their work on this entire package of bills. I want to congratulate the chair uh, for getting these bills done and all the sponsors of the bills. And that is our agenda today. With that, I turn it back over to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson, and thank you for all that you have highlighted, and congratulations to all of my colleagues who are passing very important bills today. At this time, we are going to move to the discussion of general orders. Are there any members who wish to speak at this time? Council Member Rose. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. First, I want to start by saying thank you to the speaker. Um, and today I stand before you for the almost 300,000 domestic workers in New York City. Today I stand for the women and men that have endured untold hardships while working without human rights protections. I know that they are proud watching us today as we vote to pass this life-changing legislation Intro 339 will extend the employment protections of the human rights law to all domestic workers, regardless of staff size. Domestic workers include those employed at an employer's residence for the purpose of caring for a child, sick or elderly person, or for housekeeping or any other domestic service. Too often, anti-discrimination and harassment laws have proven to be useless to domestic workers because of the nature of their work. Yet these workers are among those who most need the protection of such laws. The COVID-19 health crisis intensified an already crippling work environment for many domestic workers. Currently, some workers are forced to work 15-hour workdays without breaks and sleep in closets. They feel they, they face sexual harassment, racial discrimination, threats of deportation, and are fired for contracting COVID-19, all without the ability to bring any human rights violation cases against their employer or collect unemployment insurance. Establishing enforceable legal protections for domestic workers has been one of my top priorities as a member of the New York City Council since 2011. The passage of intro 339 is long overdue. It is time for the city to make an investment in this vital workforce. Today we will pass intro 339 and finally give domestic workers the human rights protections that they deserve. I want to again thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his leadership, his steadfast, steadfast dedication to the people of our city and his support of this bill. Madam Chair, I would just like to do the thank yous because this has been a long time coming. Please continue. Thank you. It's been a long time coming and a lot of people work really hard and I just wanna make sure that they get the accolades that they deserve. Jason Goldman, who's the chief of staff for the speaker, who you know had to put up with my persistent calls. Issa Cortez, my legislative and budget director who has fervently worked over the years to get this bill passed through pregnancy, illness and everything and Edwina Francis Martin, my previous legislative budget director, who recognized that the human rights law excluded protections for many workers back in 2011. And Jay Shri Ganapi, who is the legislative counsel to the Committee of Civil Rights and hum Civil and Human Rights, Rachel Cordero, the deputy director of Governmental Affairs Division, and Marissa Centineo, who is the New York co-director at the National Domestic Workers Alliance and, and worked on this 24-7. And everyone at the Domestic Workers Alliance, all of my colleagues here who signed on to this bill, and all of the domestic workers and healthcare workers across the state, I thank you all for helping pass this very important legislation. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Rose. At this time, seeing that there are no other members that have wished to sign up, 
to speak. We will now move into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, Intro 339B, Protections for Domestic Workers. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, Intro 2252A, Labor Peace Agreements. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, Intro 2311A, Third Party Food Delivery Services. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Intro 2291, Business Improvement Districts. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Resolve 1715, Transparency Resolve. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 818 and Reso 1718 and preconsidered LU 819 and Reso 1719 tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. Preconsidered M322 and Reso 1720, approving the appointment of Georgia Pestana New York City Corporation Council. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, intros 2333A, 2335A, 2356A, and 2359A. Third party food delivery services. Amended and coupled on general orders. The resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and at this time, I'm asking the clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items that are coupled on today's general order calendar. Van Bramer. <clears throat> Thank you. With permission, I'd like to vote aye on all general orders. Permission granted. Thank you. Thank you. Adams. I vote aye and all. Thank you. I'm Priest Samuel. I vote aye on all. Ayala. I vote aye on all. Baron. I vote aye on all. Borelli. Uh, thank you. I vote aye on all except intros 233, uh, 2333A, 2335A, 2356A, 2359A, 2311A, and land use 819. Thank you. Brennan. Aye and all. Brooks Powers. Permission to explain my vote? Um, I vote aye on all, and I, with the exception of intro 2311A, which I'll abstain on. Um, I'm super excited about all of the bills looking to support our small businesses. Um, I just had one concern in terms of the data privacy component, looking to see an opt-in versus an opt-out, but I think it's still a, a very good bill in speaking to advocates in the small business community as well. So I'm super thankful to see such a package to help um, ensure that we are removing a lot of these fees and penalties that harm our small businesses. So thank you. Thank you. Chin. I wanted to congratulate all my colleagues on passing important legislation, and especially to Councilmember Rose on your legislation. It was a long time coming. I'm glad you got it done, and I will iron off. Dharma Diaz. I and all. Ruben Diaz. Yo voto sí en todo. Dinowitz. I vote aye on all. Drum. Aye. 
Eugene. Avorai. Feliz. I don't know, thank you. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon, colleagues and everyone here. Uh, first and foremost, I thank you all for your expressions of condolence on the passing of my beloved grandmother. Um, unfortunately, she is one of the cases where she was unvaccinated and caught COVID in her assisted living facility, and she tried to get the vaccine and was unable to get it. And so it's painful when you think about so many of our family members and constituents that are affected. And we have to do our part to make sure that as many New Yorkers are vaccinated as possible. And so I thank you for your prayers of healing and strength uh, on behalf of my family and I. I am voting aye on all of today's agenda, and I want to congratulate Councilmember Debbie Rose. The domestic workers bill is a long time coming, but so worthy and so necessary. Congratulations for never giving up on making sure that we protect all of our domestic workers in the city of New York. I want to recognize uh, intro 2252, which is a bill that will provide the ability for many of our workers in the nonprofit sector to enter into labor peace agreements. This is a great bill, and I do believe that it will make a real impact, but I represent many of those workers in the nonprofit sector. And I also have heard many of the concerns from the Human Services Council and others. And so while I support this bill, I also want to ensure that this administration is recognizing that in any efforts to raise wages for our hardworking members of this industry, we have to amend these contracts. Human service contracts have not been amended to reflect cost of living, to reflect COVID, to reflect any new additions of services that have been incurred. And these are the nonprofits that have been serving food at food pantries and community centers in all of our districts. And we've been out there with them. They need to be paid equally just like everyone else. And so as we look to the future, as we encourage them to enter into these labor peace agreements, I just want to make sure that contracts are reflective of that. I think that's a fair argument, and I think it's reasonable. And with that, congratulations, colleagues, and I vote aye on today's agenda. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson, and our entire condolences to you and your family. And unfortunately, may this loss be a reminder to so many to get vaccinated. Thank you so much. Joe Nye. Madam Speaker, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. My condolences to Councilmember Gibson on the loss of her grandmother. I'll keep you and your family in my prayers. I want to thank uh, Speaker Johnson and um, Jason Golden for their commitment to and dedication to leveling the pain field with third-party food delivery apps and our restaurants. I want to recognize the hard work of Stephanie Jones, Noah Meixler, and Alia Ali, and my staff, Reggie Johnson, Austin Seckler, and most of all, Councilmember Francisco Moya for the work that we've done uh, protecting our restaurants. And thank all my colleagues for supporting these protections. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. I vote aye on all with the exception of intros 2252, 2311A, and LU 818, I'm sorry, 819, and Reso 1719, of which I vote no. Excuse me, Councilmember Holden, what was the first item? Uh, my apologies. Once again, I vote aye on all with the exception of intros 2252, 2311A, and LU 819 and accompanying Reso 1719. Thank you, sir. Kalos. 
We do a mean duet. I vote aye and all. Cool. I will aye on all. Kozlowitz. I on all and congratulations to Debbie Rose. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you very much. I'll be voting aye on all today. Um, uh, I'm enthusiastic to be voting for the first time in this body to confirm the Corporation Council. I want to give uh, credit to the speaker and the team that made that happen in the Charter Revision back in 2019. Uh, it, the, the Corporation Council is the whole city's lawyer, including this body's, and getting advice and consent on that position was really important. Ms. Pastana is highly qualified. I'm honored to vote for her. I think she's going to do a great job. But there were critical issues raised at her confirmation hearing about the role of the law department given the balance of powers and independent uh, role of this body and other elected officials that I'm glad had a chance to be heard and out there. Um, on 2252, I really want to echo the words of Councilmember Gibson. I'm a longtime supporter of labor rights. I think all workers have the right to a union, including the staff of this city council. Uh, and I support and am voting for 2252. At the same time, we have to recognize the role of the city here. The nonprofits, including their leaders, wanted a cost of living adjustment for their staff this year, and it wasn't in the city budget. So it wasn't about their lack of desire to support their workers. It was that the city didn't provide them the resources to do it. On average, those folks are waiting a year to get paid on their contract. So if we want to step up for workers in the nonprofit human service sector, in addition to supporting this bill, we got to do more to support the nonprofit human service sector and the nonprofits so that they get paid in a timely way and can pay and support their workers. So I'll be voting yes, but I think we all have an obligation to step up there. And finally, on 339A, I just want to add my voice of congratulations to Councilmember Debbie Rose, who's been fighting this for two terms now, standing with workers who, in so many cases, have the least protections, are the most vulnerable. Uh, I want to give big props to them, to the Domestic Workers Alliance, to Adikar, to We Dream in Black, uh, to Carol Gardens Association. Uh, they fought so hard for these essential protections. And Councilmember Rose, thank you for having their back every step of the way. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levin. Well, congratulations to my friend Debbie Rose on her landmark legislation. I vote aye on all. Levin. Thank you. Congrats to all the sponsors of this consequential legislation. I will be voting aye on all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Permission granted. Muchas gracias. Well, um, I am voting aye on all, but I want to just note that. Uh, in the last few hours, we've been getting a lot of notes about uh, Councilmember Powers' bill, and I'm going to be voting aye, but I think one of the great things about the notes are the impacts to privacy relating to immigrants. And so uh, Councilmember Powers and I will be working together to figure out how we can make it stronger so that we can protect all New Yorkers, including our immigrant workers. Some of the ideas that are coming up in that discussion are relating to protecting data from federal agencies like ICE and DHS who have been connected to deportations of our neighbors. So I uh, look forward to working with uh, Councilmember Powers on that. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. I don't know, with the exception of 2311A. Thank you. Moya. I vote aye. Perkins. Vote aye. Councilmember Perkins votes aye. Councilmember Powers. I vote aye on all.
Riley. I vote aye on all, and congratulations to my colleague, Councilmember John on his bill, and Councilmember Rose. Rivera. Rodriguez. As my Rodriguez votes aye. Rose. Um, I, permission to explain my vote? Um, grandmothers are so very special, and any of us who have had our grandmothers know that. And I just want to say to my sister, Vanessa Gibson, um, I, you have my love and condolences on the loss of your grandmother. I know how special that is. And I, again, I just want to say thank you to all of my colleagues who are recognizing the importance of this bill and for all of your support. And um, again, to the speaker for, you know, actually getting us over the finishing line. And um, I want to thank all of the advocates. They were worked on this night and day, and they never gave up. I want to thank you for your persistence and giving voice to a class of people who otherwise were invisible and voiceless. And I vote aye on all. Rivera. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rosenthal. Thanks so much. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. I want to start by congratulating Debbie Rose. She deserves all this kudos. Um, it's an amazing bill. You worked as long as I've known you. You worked on this bill. And uh, you made it happen. Congratulations. Um, I'm going to support uh, Keith Powers' bill, but I hope it will be amended to, um, to, in, to further protect people's privacy. And I'd like to speak very briefly about intro 2252A regarding workers in the human services sector. Um, sorry, I'm getting old. Uh, I support workers in the human services sector. They are predominantly women and women of color. Many are single moms raising a family on one income. For the past eight years, many of us has work, have worked with the sector to get the city to fund these providers enough to pay their workers a decent wage, provide full benefits and a pension, and pay enough overhead to the pro, for the programs to function. It has been an uphill and Sisyphean battle. While we are, uh, while we have in the past added funding for three years worth of COLAs, that funding was never ongoing and the salary base was so low that the COLAs made little dent uh, for the workers' um, take home pay. And while we added funding for indirect rates, the nonprofits still have yet to see a dime. I'm voting yes with reservations. We need to address the concerns raised by the human services sector themselves. They've never gotten a good answer to the question, who's going to pay for the higher wages and benefits that we all hope will be negotiated? The vast majority of funding now comes from government contracts. Will the contracts be increased to pay for the higher wages? Secondly, how can we ensure parity in this sector for workers in the same job title some are unionized, some are not. Some already receive union negotiated wages. I'm almost done, Speaker. Um, like the situation that we have today with UPK providers, the wages are all over the map, and the impact of that is fa falls directly on our children who suffer because they have multiple teachers across the year. At the end of the day, the government must stop taking advantage of our nonprofit institutions and put enough money in their contracts so they can pay their workers a good wage with good benefits. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Salamanca. Aye on all. Traeger. 
congratulations to my colleague, Councilmember Debbie Rose, and her bill. Uh, I uh, will be voting aye and all, but I, I will be abstaining on 2311. Ulrich. Uh, thank you very much. I'm voting aye on all with the exception of 2311 and also voting no on land use uh, 819. I just want to thank my colleagues for their condolences um, on the news of Matt's passing. It happened about an hour and a half after we passed the budget on the day of the budget adoption. I was on the train on the way back to the office. Uh, going to thank him for the great job that he did uh, in serving my constituents and my community. And when I got back to the office, they said he wasn't feeling well. And uh, we found out that around 5.30 that evening, uh, while he was at his car around the corner, that he had collapsed and uh, he suffered a, a massive heart attack. So Matt was a wonderful addition to my staff. Uh, worked for us for several years, only 40 years old. He just recently passed the bar exam. Mm. He was looking forward to continuing his public service at another agency uh, that was already being worked out, and unfortunately, God had other plans. So again, I want to thank my colleagues uh, for their sincere condolences, for their prayers, uh, for his family, and for the other members of my staff who were deeply affected by, uh, by his loss. Um, lastly, I, you know, I, I just want to, on a lighter note, mentioned that I knew that, uh, you know, one way or another, no matter what happens in November, that a woman would be occupying my seat for the first time in District 32, but I didn't know it was going to happen before January. And here's Lily at my seat now. So there is a woman in the <laughs> council member's seat already in District 32, and I'm very pleased to uh, bring uh, Lily with me to work today. So thank you again to all my colleagues. Thank you. Our condolences to you. And we're so happy to have you, Lily, here today. You're making a wonderful council member. Jaeger. Permission granted. This is on some of these bills we're returning here for the second time. And the argument had been made the last time we voted on some of them that uh, they made sense. They were for purposes of uh, saving restaurants from the pandemic. But in my view, some of them uh, interfere with the constitutional obligation, with the uh, contractual obligations of, of parties that have entered into arm's length transactions uh, with each other. And I don't believe that we should do that. So for that reason, I'm voting no on introductions 2356 and 2359. In, uh, being consistent with how I voted last year. Uh, I am voting no on 2311 for reasons uh, stated by Council Members Brooke Powers and so many others, although I'm voting differently. I do have concerns about the data. I have concerns about uh, whether or not we once again are, are weaponizing uh, the pandemic for purposes of attacking an industry that we don't like. I don't like the app industry either, but if there's going to be a reason that we should uh, regulate them better than the way they are regulated now, let's just say that instead of, you know, hiding under COVID as a reason for data to transmit from one party to another. I'm voting no on uh, introduction 2291. Um, as I have said prior here too in this council, bids are taxes. The assessments of bids are taxes. When we rate, when we allow bids to raise their assessments, that's a tax. The bids exist to supplement the service that the city of New York ought to be providing which it, it should be providing based on the taxes that are paid. So when we ignore the fact that the bids are there to supplement a service that the people who live around there and work around there are not getting because the city isn't doing their job, let's get here and say that and let's fix that. But everybody living in the bid has already paid the taxes for the services they're receiving and I don't think it's the right time to raise taxes on them. I'm voting no on introduction 339 um, for, uh, for a very simple reason. I believe that the Human Rights Commission, the uh, enforcement agency, is going to weaponize this bill to, to hurt very small employers that have just one employee. And I think everything else in the bill is right. We ought to be figuring out ways to protect these employees, but allowing the Human Rights Commission to walk into a household 
and, and uh, target them with summonses that are unforgiving in many respects, I don't think is someplace that we ought to be. And last but not least, Madam President, thank you very much. I'm voting no on Land Use 819, Resolution 1719. From the day that I first ran for office until the, this day, I have always promised that I will back up my community boards. I will continue to back up my community board. My community board is vehemently opposed to this, vehemently. It will, in my, in my uh, judgment and in their judgment, hurt the neighborhood in many, many ways. Uh, it's a boondoggle, but it's passing, and uh, it will pass with my no vote. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you. Mario. Thank you. I'm voting no on 2311, 339B, 2252, 2356, 2359, and land use 819, and yes, on the rest. Combo. I, too, want to congratulate my colleagues, Councilmember Joe and I, and my sister, Councilmember Debbie Rose, so incredibly proud of you for your persistence. You continue to trail blazes all over the city. So I thank you so much, and I thank you and congratulate you, and I proudly vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. Okay, one moment, please. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 2311A, which was adopted by a vote of 36 affirmative, five negative, and two abstentions. And intro 233A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 2335-A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 2356-A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 2359-A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. LU 819 plus resolution 1719, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. Quiet in the chambers. And, and intro 2252A, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 2291, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 339-B, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. Thank you. At this time, let me just count this. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. 
Before we adjourn this meeting, we have one member signed up to speak on general discussion. That is Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to take time to call attention to the recent celebration of the 100th birthday of Ms. Ina L. Johnson. And I just want to share a little bit of her bio. Ms. Johnson was born initially in Havana, Cuba, and moved to the United States as a young child. She was educated in the public school system, and her first employment was with the federal government working under very restrictive Jim Crow laws. She married Booker T. Johnson. They had 10 children together, and her oldest son was my former husband. She remained a housewife until 1962 when she became a stenographer for the, for the state government, and then a school secretary at Boys and Girls High School. She was very much uh, a proponent of getting education. So after raising her children, she returned to school and at the age of 53, she attained her associate's degree and then her bachelor's degree in African studies from Brooklyn College. And then at the age of 61, she went and attained her master's degree in history from Brooklyn College. She has many talents, including handcrafts and sewing and gardening and she loves to read. She's a member of organizations including Sisters, Assisting Sisters of South Africa. She traveled in her 80s, I think it was, to Kenya as well as to Egypt. And while they were in Kenya, the group that she was traveling with built a well that would bring potable water to the village that was there. And she's just a model and an inspiration of love and determination and success and I just wanted to put into the record that uh, she is a member of Council Member Alika Ampli Samuels District, and we just wanted to give her that acknowledgement. They had a grand celebration at the house, and you had to have presented your, uh, your vaccination card in order to come in because we realize how important it is. So I just wanted to put on the record the 100th anniversary of my former mother-in-law, Ina Louise Johnson. Thank you. And my son, Jawanza, celebrated his birthday July 23rd also. Thank you. We'll now have Council Member Koo. Uh, I rise today to ask my colleagues to join me in co-sponsoring intro 2365 and intro 2366. Intro 2365 would codify the Dan Trees Task Force, which would ensure that this important task force is continued in the future. Intro 2366 addresses the health of our city's urban canopy and provides transparency on how our city trees are inspected and assessed. Too often, our offices have received complaints from constituents who are concerned about unhealthy and dangerous trees. However, after reporting the condition, we are given little information as to whether the trees are inspected. The results of, this ins uh, of, the results of those inspections and actions taken in response, the bill will requiring reporting on what the city does when it receives complaints and referrals about unhealthy and dangerous trees, requires regular inspections between pruning cycles, and is a step towards ensuring that our city's urban canopy is healthy and will last for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter Koo. That concludes our general discussion at this time. I'll now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's meeting. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to wish uh, your beautiful son, Prince, a happy birthday. Thank He's you. He's turning four. Thank and you. And the stated meeting of July 29th, 2021 is hereby adjourned.